you know, this is really uh, an important season that we're in, and, um, you know, God just wants us to be free. I mean, he always does, he always has, but more than ever right now, we can't play games, right? And um, so we're gonna go through the Bible today. We're gonna really review a lot of scripture that we're very familiar with, and for some you may not be familiar with, but uh, this is about kingdom authority today, right? And in order to flow in deliverance and to understand deliverance, you have to understand your authority. And so, and, I, and again, I, you know, I, I've, I teach this so often, but this is like one of the key teachings I feel because, you know, the enemy always has a strategy to try to steal, kill, and destroy at all times. And, um, but we have to know that even though there's pushback and even though the enemy tries to steal from us, we take a stand and we fight. Amen, because he's given us the goods. He's given us the armor and the weaponry to overthrow the works of the enemy. So with that, we have here in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, we have to understand, like you'll see even today, um, you know, in, in the scriptures that God has given us dominion authority. We have authority. And until you really and get a revelation of what we operate in, you know, you know that's, that's where the enemy is always trying to sabotage us in our walk because he's pretty envious of what we have because he lost it. And, uh, and he recognizes and he knows that if he can distract us or get us to get all crazy, like t tonight during worship, the Lord had me go to Psalm, I'm going to read it real quick, Psalm uh, 15, can I put this thing here, Psalm 15. And it says, uh, it's, it's similar to who can ascend the hill of the Lord. <clears throat> Let me just read it to you. It says, who may dwell continually on your holy hill? He who walks with integrity, <clears throat> strength of character and works righteousness and speaks and holds truth in his heart. Just that alone. Who walks with integrity, strength of character, works righteousness. And, that, and it's open to, in, to, to really looking at your own heart rather than pointing your finger at everybody else and speaks and holds truth in his heart. <clears throat> he doesn't slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. In his eyes, an evil person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord and obediently worship him with awe-inspired reverence and submissive wonder. He keeps his word even to his own disadvantage and does not change it for his own benefit. That, wow. I'll read that again. He does not put out his money at, in, uh, at interest to a fellow Israelite and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never, ever be shaken. This is the whole time during worship. And then the Lord had me going back and forth to Psalm uh, 15. Then it was to Psalm 24. And it's the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those who dwell in it. And he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the streams and the river. Who may ascend unto the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in this holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false, nor has sworn oaths deceitfully. He will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So then it just goes on and on. And so it's, and then it goes on, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up ancient doors, that the king of glory might come in. And who is this king of glory? The, long straw, the Lord is strong, mighty, and the Lord mighty in battle. That, so that the king of glory can come in. And so it's all about us getting our, our hearts right and understanding that God is saying, listen, I'm for you. And I want my glory to overtake you. And I want my presence to come into a greater place than it's ever been, that we will ascend, right? We will learn. <clears throat> we sang about the house of prayer. We are habitat. We are a house of prayer, right? And God is bringing us. We're coming into a place where Holy Spirit wants to envelop us with travailing prayer. I'm telling you. Anyway, so this is what during worship that the Lord was speaking to me. So in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, it says, Then God said, Let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. Okay? We have the spirit like the Lord. 
And it says here, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth, all those creepy things. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created them male and female. Male, male, I can't even talk. Male and female, he created them. Male and female, get that? Male and female. And God blessed them, granting them certain authority and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over and dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth, okay? But he's saying, listen, you have authority. God has given us authority over every creepy thing out there. He's given us authority to speak and to declare. He's given us authority, right? And so the next scripture here is Psalm 8, 4 through 6 in the New Living Translation. It says, what are mere mortals that you think about them, human beings that you should care for them? You made them only a little lower than God and crowned them. We were singing about that, but we were crowning God with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. And, but a lot of times we go through stuff and we don't think we have the authority, but we have the authority, right? And so Hebrews 1, 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things, what? By the word of his power, that when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He's upholding all things by the word of his power. That's why our words, death and life, are in the power of our tongue. That's why our words are so powerful. That's why we have to watch what we're saying. I'm telling you, a Christian curse is powerful. That's why we, we don't curse our brothers and sisters. We bless them. Amen? 2 Chronicles 6, 26. It says, he prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty, and no one can stand against you. See, and we're one with him. See, but if the enemy can get us, listen, he knows the authority that we have, but we don't have that. A lot of us don't have that revelation. I'm, I'm still getting my revelation. I'm still meditating on all this. And that, that God is saying to us, listen, I want you to see your little Jesuses, all of us. You know, we, we have the spirit of the living God in us to overthrow the works of the enemy. And so you have to meditate on, on this and recognize that, that God is saying to us, I want you to come up higher. I want you to keep your eyes fixed on me and see yourself through my eyes and know that we are walking, talking, fire-breathing Christians. But see, he keeps us in this place sometimes of defeat or discouragement. Or, or here's the other thing, where we won't even acknowledge our own stuff. I'm going to tell you something. That is key in deliverance. You cannot get free if you don't acknowledge your stuff. And we all have stuff. So it's like, okay, well, what's the, what's the common denominator here? It can't be everybody else when you have a problem. What's the common denominator? You or me. Let, let's, let's look at ourselves and let's be open and honest as to what's happening. Because we, we don't get anywhere in deliverance when we're ministering to people if they're not honest, if they're not open. If they want to blame everybody and their mother for their stuff, that's a problem. So in, in Isaiah 14, in the message, I really like the way this was worded. It's about Satan's downfall. What, what, what a come down this is, O Babylon, day star, son of dawn, flat on your face in the underworld mud. You fa you're famous for flattering nations. You said to yourself, I'll climb to heaven. I'll set my throne over the stars. I'll run the assembly of angels that meets on sacred Mount Zaphon. I'll climb to the top of the clouds. I'll take over as king of the universe. But you didn't make it, did you? Instead of climbing up, you came down, down with the underground dead, down to the abyss of the pit. People will stare and muse, can this be the one who terrorized the earth and its kingdom, turned earth to a moonscape, wasted its city, shut up his prisoners to a living death? That's what the Bible says about that. See, he desired to make God's, his throne above God's throne. And it's all that pride in how he behaved. And that's where, you know, we're going to look at him and say, this is the one who tormented me? 
This is the one that wreaked havoc in my life that I allowed him to when I didn't have to allow him to because God has given me authority to fight and stand. Yeah, there's suffering. Yes, there's difficult times. <laughs> there's difficult times, but he's given us the strength and the ability to stand and fight through the power of the word of God, through the blood of Jesus, through his name. And when we meditate on the word and we recognize what's in the book and what are our rights, that's how we overthrow the enemy. And it's not without push. It's not without a fight, right? That's why he says in scriptures, you have to fight the good fight of faith. But see, here's the thing. You see, Satan did not want to submit, and that's how he'll get us. He'll get us to where we have an obstinate attitude, where we don't want to submit, where we don't want to align, you know, with the promises of the Lord. The Bible says, submit therefore unto the Lord, and then resist the devil, and he will flee. We just try to resist him at times without submitting. The one under authority can have authority. If you're not under authority, you don't have authority. So man was created, I wrote here, man was created for God and earth was created for man. And, you know, Adam blew it too. Like when you, when you I'm not going to, I don't have time to go all through that, but Adam blew it through his disobedience. He blamed his wife. <laughs> but, but he blew it too. It wasn't just a wife. And um, so, but, but see, Jesus had a plan. And, and the cross defeated, there was that altar. The, the cross was the altar and there was this divine exchange, right? And Jesus... Uh, defeated Satan. He canceled all legal claims that the enemy had against us. And we'll read some of those scriptures. And he totally annihilated, destroyed every attempt that the enemy has had against us. And the only way that the enemy can get to us is through the lies. He, he just does this total thing. You know, uh, the woman who, who um, used to mentor us, uh, what would she say that he would, um, his, all his teeth were pulled and his claws were taken out because he would just, the only thing he can do is gum you to death. <laughs> so, but, but if we let him, if we let him and we listen to the lies, that's where we, when he's shooting his arrows at us, right, that's where we have to then apprehend those arrows and, and, and cast them down and, and know the word of God and have, and worship and, you know, do our thing there. So in 1 John 3, 8, it says, for this purpose, the son of God was manifested. He was made visible that he might destroy, undo, loosen, and dissolve the work of the devil. Now, it's really important. I know we're, we're a house of inner healing and deliverance, but a lot of churches don't believe, they still don't believe a Christian can have a demon. I, we've cast out thousands of Christians, uh, the demons and Christians, so I don't know what they're talking about. When you are born again, as you know, your spirit is one with Christ, but your soul needs healing. And then we have stuff from our past, generational curses. I'll talk about that in a minute. And, and we have abuse. There's different things that have happened in our lives that really hurt our hearts, right? And so God's not cold towards us where it's like, well, that's your problem, you know? <laughs> Get over it. That's what I was told in the past. But what we have to do is understand that God is saying, listen, I'm giving you a strategy. There's, there's principles in the Word of God that we have to abide by, and it's a process, it's not an instantaneous, you have a problem, let's just cast out a devil. No, half of it is our mindsets. It's a stronghold of the flesh. Demons are easy, but if you're in agreement with them, then they overtake you. And so, again, I just, I, sometimes I talk to people, and it's like the devil, the devil, the devil. The devil's under our feet. Yes, the devil does have power, but he's in a, he does not have authority over us. And when you recognize, wait a second, this is who I am in Christ, and I have the spirit of the living God in me, and you better back down. You know, when I, I mean, we have dealt with, with spirit things, you know, with people and deliverances that have threatened us, that have levitated, that, you know, who turned into a snake. I mean, we've seen crazy manifestations, but guess what? They get free, and they back down. Why? Because we're so great? No, because of the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of his word, the power of worship, and, and just being in alignment with God. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 8, in the Amplified, it says, But rather, what are we setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding, and now revealed to us by God that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us 
into the glory of his presence. None of the rulers, I love this, none of the rulers of this age or, would, or world perceived and recognized and understood this, for if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. They got their sorry behinds kicked when the cross was when Jesus willfully died on the cross and destroyed the works of the enemy through the power of the blood. He shed his blood for us. He was brutally beaten for our freedom. That's why we can't stay in this place of defeat. And like I've said to you before, and I'm not cussing, what BS are you listening to? What is your belief system? What is the belief system that you're listening to that's not in alignment with the word? Because that's half the battle of deliverance. Because, I, again, we, we can pray and we can cast demons out of people, but if you don't know who you are in Christ, and we're going to talk about an orphan spirit, we're going to talk about that identity. If you don't understand who you are in Christ, we waste our time. Because in the very beginning, in, in 1980, when I really started operating in deliverance, not knowing a thing, of what I was, I did everything wrong, just telling you. And so um, when we were, I would just take authority and cast devils out. But then the person would still be really battling and struggling and, and not getting free. And that's when the Holy Spirit started teaching us about integrating inner healing, dealing with your soul wounds with deliverance, right? I mean, it's common sense now, but there wasn't much out there then that was teaching you other than the book uh, Pigs in the Parlor and, and some stuff by Wynne Worley, but, but there really wasn't a whole lot out there. And, and it was really, I mean, I thought it was just a focus on, on just dealing with the demons, you know? But a lot of it comes from the trauma we heard from Mike Hutchins, a lot of the trauma in our heart, a lot of the abuse that you may have experienced growing up with family or school or, you know, whatever, you know, abuse in a marriage, you know, physical, sexual abuse, you know, it's really hurtful, right? And so, um, that's where the Lord's saying, listen, I want to heal your heart because that can be that open door where you don't realize there's a root of unforgiveness, of bitterness. Oh my goodness, the bitterness will keep us so bound. Where we, if we don't address those issues, that's where it's like, it's like, like you have like that, that tape that's on you and it's like that thing, that tape that catches all the flies. You know, that's what happens when, when you have an open door. And it's an open door for you to be harassed and tormented. And let me tell you something, unforgiveness is key. Amen. Demons will not come out of an individual if you are operating in unforgiveness, and I don't care how right you think you are. You, if we don't forgive, Jesus won't forgive us. Unforgiveness is the one main thing. When I see, when we're taking authority over uh, a spirit in an individual and it's not budging, I usually ask them, are you harboring unforgiveness towards anybody? Well, not that I can think of, but what about towards yourself? Oh, then the spirit was like, you know, starts manifesting. So, you know, unforgiveness, whether it's towards yourself, whether it's towards a family member, the beauty of this is that the Holy Spirit, through God, God will help us to forgive. Some, some, some people have gone through such awful, you know, situations where, you know, it's not that simple to just forgive the individual, right? But it's Holy Spirit coming in. Holy Spirit helping you. And we always preface it, I choose to forgive that person that hurt me. Holy Spirit brings in the healing. We can't do this on our own. And so, well, I mean, you know, depending on what it is. But for the most part, it's like, Lord, I'm going to do whatever it takes because I am not letting this devil harass me. In, in Luke uh, 10, 17 through 19 in the Amplified, it says, The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Listen carefully. I've given you authority. He, this is God talking to all of us. He's given us authority that we now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing in any way will harm you. Well, we have to live a holy life, though. That's really key. We can't just live any of which way and just speak to the devils because you get your backsides kicked, too. And, you know, what happened to the sons of Sceva? Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who in the heck are you? And they came and they beat him up. So that's why, again, we have to live a holy life before the Lord. And the beauty of God, again, is that he, it's... There's, a, there's progress in the process, right? And so he takes us little at a time and he, and he helps us, but he loves us too much to let any of us stay where we're at. He's saying, I'm not letting you stay. 
in a place of bitterness. I'm not letting you stay in a place of unforgiveness. I'm not letting you stay in that place of a woundedness or self-pity that you keep going around that mountain. In Deuteronomy, it says that, you know, it's time to get off the mountain. They were going around and around and around that mountain. Come on, what's changing? We can keep talking about our stuff. Like, my, like uh, Mike Hutchins said about trauma, it's when that person only wants to keep talking about their problems and not do anything with it. That's that trauma. But then it's like, okay, how many, how many times are we going to talk about this? Let's do something about it. Let's put some action to it. And that's the whole thing about deliverance and what Jesus wants and saying to us, listen, allow me to show you, to highlight your heart, to see about any roots that are there that could be hindering you from moving forward. Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then I didn't part the rest of the part and he's given it to us. We have that authority. In Colossians 2, 13 through 15, it says, And you were dead in your trespasses and in uncircumcision of your flesh, your sensuality, your sinful carnal nature. God brought to life together with Christ, having freely forgiven all of our transgressions. And I love this. Listen, having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the no bond with his legal decrees and demands which was in force that stood against us hostile to us this note with his regulations decrees and demands he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to the cross God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them in him and, and in on, and on the cross so we see here that everything that the enemy, picture, picture a chalkboard and all the things that he had against you as you repent, as you release it, everything that he has against you, you're erasing it. There's a raising. So when the enemy comes to harass you and remind you of something you've done wrong, once you've repented, it's like, uh-uh. I have repented. It, it, the handwriting has been erased. So you need to, and I know you know this, but we war with the word. I'm not going to listen to him. Shut up. Here's what the word says. The handwriting's been erased. It's not there anymore. I'm forgiven. I am no longer bound by that. Now, there may have been, because of depending on your circumstance, you know, a spirit that we have to address, but that's how we were. That's fighting the fight of faith. That's taking authority over the enemy and say, I am not listening to you. I am not going to align myself and sit and listen to your taunting to torment me, I'm not going to allow it. See, it's up to us. I can't do that for you. You can't do it for me. It's up to us to say, uh-uh, here's what the word says. Now, if you have that anger and bitterness towards God, then you deal with it and bring that before him as well. He knows your heart anyway. You might as well just tell him what's going on. In Ephesians 2, 4 through 6, in the Amplified, it says, But God, so rich in his mercy, because of in, and let me put my glasses on, because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Think about this. Even by our own shortcomings and our trespasses, he gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him for. It is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve that you were saved. You're delivered from judgment and made a partaker of Christ's salvation. He raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him. Do you hear me? In the heavenly sphere, by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Every one of us share a complete identity with Christ, according to the word. We were you know, crucified with him, buried, and raised with him. God is saying, I'm giving you that new life. I want you to understand. We heard about grace on Sunday, about grace, grace. That, that we don't have to work for it. We have to submit and align ourselves with the word. Meditate on the word. But it's like seeing ourselves and accepting what God has for us. The very life of Christ himself, the new life with which he quickened him, it's by grace. I'm reading it again. We didn't deserve it, but he delivered us from judgment and made us partakers of Christ's salvation. I'm telling you, 
you, you just need to keep meditating on these scriptures until you, be, until you really become one with it. Now listen to this one. Romans 6, 6 through 7. I know I'm reading a lot of scripture and I'm doing it on purpose. It says here, we know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to, listen, was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil, that we no longer be slaves of sin. For when a man dies, he's freed, loosed, delivered from the power of sin among men. In other words, when we die to our our flesh, when we die to uh, the sin in our life. Our self was nailed to the cross. Meditate on that. God is saying, listen, I'm trying to make it easy for you. It's not work. It's not supposed to be work. I want you to understand that, that my spirit is one with you. It was nailed to the cross, even though, like, you might think, well, oh, my God, look at the way I'm living. Look at the, what I'm doing. That's why we repent and make it right. But this is what he's saying, that he's saying that our sin was ineffective, inactive. How many times have we ministered to people, and they will not forgive themselves? Oh, yeah, you know, what I did was just terrible. I'm like, well, God knows that, but he, you know, he wants you to choose to forgive yourself. And no, I can't. Well, if you can't, you're choosing not to. That's going to hinder you from freedom. But how many times, like, you keep rehearsing in your mind. Remember last week when I spoke about the maniac of Gadaria? It says he was living in the tombs, and that word tomb means memory recall. If you're going to keep allowing the enemy to remind you of, of that person you can't stand or, or that situation that really hurts your heart, and you keep rehearsing it over and over again, you're going to stay in the tombs. It, it, you're going to allow yourself to be harassed by the enemy. See, we can become our own worst enemy. This is all part of deliverance. Because like I said, demons casting demons out is very easy. Take authority over the thing and command it to come out. It's easy. And when he doesn't have that hold on you, that's when it comes out. Right, Easter? We deal with it all the time. But when there's so much stuff or hurt or abuse or, or trauma in our lives that we haven't walked through, there's patterns, and we don't have to dredge everything up, but it's as Holy Spirit's leading us, you know? If, if we are always, like, let's say, raging or, or seething or we have an attitude or, you know, um, you know, we're in bitterness or we, you know, want to, like, lash out at people, right? That's a problem. And we can't blame, again, like I keep saying to you, you can't blame everybody for that. Why? What's the root? Let, let's look introspectively. Holy Spirit, show me. He'd be more than happy to show you. Because he loves us too much and he wants us free. You know, listen, one of the key things about deliverance, it's, it's a love ministry. It really is. Because God loves us so much that he doesn't want us being tormented by the enemy, and he wants you to be free. He wants me to be free. I recently had a minister um, in, in Texas, and, and so I was ministering out there on deliverance, and, um, you know, this one girl, my God, I mean, whew, I thought, oh, here we go. I don't, I don't have a team of people with me. <laughs> and uh, people are manifesting, and... Oh, my Lord, like her, her mother-in-law put a curse on her, and this was happening, and that was happening, and I mean, it was, I mean, you, you saw it. I mean, it was one thing after another of these spirits manifesting and trying to, you know, sh I mean, it was just, they were trying to do everything to put a show on, but she wound up getting so free. And she came up to me afterwards and said, oh, my gosh, because I feel so light. I can't believe what God has done. But, but I said to her, you know, like she... Her, the curse was placed on her, but she was believing a lot of, of the things her mother-in-law was saying about her. So we had to come out of agreement. We had to walk her through and pray, choose to forgive her mother-in-law, choose to forgive herself, choose to forgive her husband for not sticking up for her. And as we walked through that, that process, that was boom, the spirits were coming out. They couldn't stay, you see. So it's so good, and we love seeing people get set free. In Matthew 8, 16 through 17, in the Amplified, it says, When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons, and they cast out the spirits with a word and restored to health all who were sick, exhibiting his authority as Messiah, so that he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took our infirmities upon himself and carried away our diseases. And so, you know, I've had... I've had people, ministers, say to me that, again, 
you know, Jesus, you know, when Jesus wasn't about deliverance. Well, if you read through the Gospels, first of all, the, in Mark, the very first thing Jesus did was cast out a demon. If you read through the Gospels, there's 39 times Jesus cast demons out. So, you know, if Jesus did it a lot, I think uh, that's something that we need to be concerned about. And, um, and again, our focus isn't just on demons, but, but it's on uh, Jesus just wanting to help heal, heal us. I don't have this on your handout. And I, I really feel to share this tonight, but I'm going to just read in uh, Matthew 10, 1. It says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority, power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. When you look up the word disease, it says every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. When you look up the word disease, it's malachios, and it means homosexuals. So Jesus went about, and it's, four, it's in four places in the book. It's only in the book of Matthew, because one time the Lord had me do a word study on healing. He said, I want you to look up every, every word of healing in the, in, uh, the New Testament. And in the Gospels, rather. And I did. It was only found in the book of Matthew. So Jesus was focused on healing the, that, the alphabet community, the, the homosexual, the lesbian. You know, he knew that we were going to be dealing. This isn't anything new. It was so prevalent in that day as well. But I'm going to read it to you again. It says here, every, he said, he gave them authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal, to bring healing and to bring deliverance, right? To have power over it, uh, every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. It's, um, you know, again, the, the word malachios, and, uh, and it means it's, it's primarily focused on uh, sickness and homosexual. So Jesus was dealing with that. There's another portion of scripture in, in um, Matthew 9, 38. says, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news gospel of the kingdom, healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness, his words and his works reflecting his messiahship. Again, that word disease there is malachia. So, so God has had a plan and he has a plan to set them free as well. It's sin is sin. But, you know, look at, look at the focus. Look at what has happened, you know, in, in uh, really promoting, right, homosexuality and lesbianism. And, and, and you know, what the White House did, with the, the, you know, the, the, that they stole from the, the covenant of God, the rainbow. And uh, I'm sorry. There are churches that are embracing it and they're saying it's hate. It is not hate. It is love. Jesus came to set the captives free, period. And, um, and, and again, Jesus is a designer of the human being, okay? So he knows what's best for us. And so it's like in Romans 1, when you read it, it's like us trying to tell him, creator, how we have to live and what, what is best for us. That's why there's so much stuff that goes on that, that's just causing so much havoc in the world. So sin is the open door for oppression. And Jesus says, I love you too much. I love everyone who's in a, in a place of defeat. I love everyone. I don't want you to stay that way. He died on the cross so that we don't have to live in misery, that we have a hope, that we become prisoners of hope, that we have a hope in knowing that God is saying, listen, you may be struggling in an area, but he's saying, I have a way out. I have a way of escape for every situation. Nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing is too difficult for you to get out of that place of defeat. It's a process. It's not always bam, bam, you know, one, two, three, you know. I mean, let, maybe in the greater glory we'll get to that place. I, I believe that. I believe that God wants us to get to that place of greater glory. But right now, it's still a process for some, right? It's okay. Just know there's progress in the process, and God wants us free. Amen? Okay. So, I, you know, again, I was thinking, I said, well, Lord, you know, why? You think about it. Why, again, if Jesus came to set us free... Why are there so many people still struggling? Well, I'm glad you asked. And Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's why I really wanted to just review and go over. And I've studied this many times, and there were so many more scriptures, and I just love it. It just really 
just strengthens you when you're, you're reading it and you're meditating on it. It's like, ooh, you know, and you say, that's right. And you just see, like, what God has for us. And it's like, wait a minute, Lord. You're saying, listen, don't back down. Don't give in to the enemy. Don't allow him to harass you. Don't allow him to torment you. Don't allow him to steal from your marriage. Don't allow him to steal from your children. Come on, what can we do different to make it work? Rather than point our fingers at everybody. Come on, stop it. What can we do that, that the Lord is saying? First of all, it's repent. Renounce. Lord, I repent for my behavior. I repent for, for my sin. I repent for the anger in my heart. I renounce my agreement with the enemy. And again, we, we'll really go through and pray. But, but it's simple. Jesus is not complicated. He makes it easy. When there's been abuse... When there's been sexual abuse growing up and, and people have in, endured that, that's a challenge. I mean, my God, the people who were supposed to protect you the most are the ones that were harming you. That's a process. And that's drama. And God wants to minister his amazing love to heal your hearts and, and to bring you into that place of wholeness. We, we, there's, um, you know, you, you get so fragmented when things like that happen. But God, you know, again, in his mercy and his grace, he has a way to bring that healing and restoration to you. In that scripture where it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, I see the time. Destroyed means to be undone, to cut off, the, and no, to cut of out, the, <laughs> to cut off, doesn't even make sense, to cut, to cut of at the sight of theophany, to be dumb or silent, to fail or to perish. All right, so when you're destroyed, you, you, you're, you're, not, you're not sensing things. You're, you're, it's like dull of hearing. You're, you're failing. You're undone. You're cut off from the Godhead. So knowledge here means they don't have discernment, skill, perception. And then the root word, which I thought was really interesting, and that word knowledge is yada, and it means to be acquainted with, to know him. See, you're, you don't, the reason why you're failing and you don't have that knowledge of the Holy Spirit because you're not one with him. You're not, you're not one in his presence where he's the one speaking to you, where he's the one giving us direction, right? So he's saying, my people are destroyed, man, for a lack of knowledge. I, I don't want to be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Holy Spirit, teach me. He's our teacher. He's always showing us. But you want to come to him with a submissive, humble heart, Amen. So when you look up the word um, deliverance, it means to rescue from bondage or danger. Um, and, you know, I see the time. I see the time. Um, bondage, you know, I, I think I'm going to pause here. But uh, I wanted us to really review the, um, our authority. And I, maybe if you have some questions, you can ask me. But I do want to just, for, I, I'm sure a lot of you know this. But, you know, you know what the word salvation means? The Greek word is soteria. And so when we get saved, obviously, it's not just to go to heaven, but that word means deliverance, preservation, safety, rescue, deliverance from molestation of enemies, to be redeemed from all earthly ills. That's what salvation means. So God is saying, listen, that's great that you're going to heaven, but he really, his design really was for us to bring heaven to earth. Right? His design was for us to get free of all the junk in our heads. And, 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 and really, I'm telling you, it's the revelation of the truth of the word in John 8 that sets us free. The word is that powerful. And so many don't read the word. And that's where uh, years ago I had a famine. I had a famine. I had a word. And the, the word was I saw angels come in the room and they were thrusting swords in people's uh, abdomens, and it had Hebrews 4.12 on it. And I heard the angel say, the famine of the word is over. Yeah. And, and I never forgot that. And I said, Lord, and, and the Lord's been bringing that up to me again. And I said, well, Lord, I am decreeing that the famine of the word is over. Because, again, it's the revelation of the truth of the word that sets us free. That's why we have to read the word. It's good to read a book, but you need to read the word. And Jesus is the word. Amen? So I don't want to, I was going to teach, uh, I can do this next week uh, on curses, generational curses, 
the spirits that are involved there, the, the clusters of, of spirits that work together. Um, but I'll, I'll do that next week. Um, but I wanted to open it up. Does anybody have any questions? Um, any um, thing that you might want to ask about anything? About... <laughs> you do? You have a question for me? Come on, go ahead and ask. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody? Oh, so everybody has it all down? You're good? All right. Okay, well, we can pray an end. All right. No, I'm kidding. Anybody have any questions? I know. Usually it takes one, then, then, then they'll start asking. We're good? All right. Well, praise God. So, Lord, I just am so grateful everybody has it down here and that we all know the word so well. I am so grateful for that, Lord. And, Lord, I just thank you that, that you came to set us free. I thank you for our authority. I thank you, Father, that, that you've given us. We're one with you, and you've given us the authority to overthrow the works of the enemy, whether it's poverty, whether it's fear of man, whether it's people-pleasing, whether it's just that self-rejection or rejection, whether it's that orphan mindset that doesn't understand the love of the Father over our lives. Lord, you came to set us free, no matter what it is. You're there for us with your amazing love, with your unfailing love for all of us, never condemning us, but, but promoting us, wanting to bring us into that place of destiny. Lord, where the enemy has tried to stop destiny, Father, we take authority over that. We pray, Lord, remove the scales off of people's eyes to know that God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us here. Lord, I just thank you that, that you are liberating mindsets. I thank you that you're clothing us with your mantle of grace to understand your goodness and to understand your, your, your plan for each and every one. It doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what we've gone through. God is saying, this is a restart. This is a dawning of a new day. And the Lord is saying, just receive even just that truth. Don't be negative. Just repent for, for being negative and, and always complaining and murmuring. Lord, forgive us. Well, we have so limited you because of our natural mindset because we can't understand how you're going to move forward in our lives. But you never ask us to understand it. You ask us to obey you. So, Lord, I bless each and every person here because, Lord, you want them to have the revelation of their purpose, of their destiny, of what you've called them to. Lord, I, I, I just am so grateful for your love and your mercy. Your mercy triumphs over judgment. Your mercy, your grace. And I thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.